Marvellous. Well, welcome to our, I think, penultimate uh, session of, of room two. Um, Judith Jones. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're with us. <laughs> um, I was invited by Dalton to talk about something. And I decided I'd talk about the future of enterprise architecture. And there's a third that I have behind this, which will become obvious as I go through. Because often we forget why we're doing enterprise architecture. We've got to get down to the detail and we forget about the bigger picture that we're trying to create. Now, some of you may know me from old. Um, you know, I'm the lady that uh, leads lots of program training and uh, you know, I'm very strong on the enterprise architecture. But I also step out of that picture and look at what does enterprise architecture really mean in the big picture. So I'm going to talk about EA as back to the future. Back to what we always thought enterprise architecture was going to be about many, many, many years ago. And just to let you know, I'm one of those ancient people. I've been around the IT industry a long, long time. Um, and what I'm going to talk about is <clears throat> something called the fourth industrial re revolution, or according to G7, the next production revolution. Um, and uh, we ask the question, well, what, what has this got to do with enterprise architecture? What's she talking about? Well, I'm talking about what are we doing enterprise architecture? Because the fourth industrial revolution needs enterprise architecture big time. The next production revolution needs enterprise architecture big time. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to have a look what that means in the enterprise architecture space. So for those of you who don't know what this fourth uh, industrial revolution is all about, the World Economic Forum, some of you may have heard of this, um, runs an event in Davos every year, Davos in Switzerland, and they invite into that forum hundreds of government officials all the big readers go to Davos. They have a whole structure around how they want to discuss things of interest to all the government readers. And one of the big things that they talk about is digital. And the changes that digital are bringing to industry. Now, in um, the World Economic Forum, they have defined this digital transformation as being the fourth industrial revolution. And what they're saying and what they think is that basically what we're seeing is that digital is reshaping industries, blurring geographical areas and boundaries and challenging the regulatory frameworks that we currently have in place. And people start going, regulatory frameworks? Yeah, this is what enterprise architecture is about, right? Regulatory frameworks. Um, and even defining what it means to be human, okay? So World Economic Forum try to bring everybody together to have those conversations and discussions. And they've actually set up something that they, um, the, uh, a center, that focuses on the fourth industrial revolution. And that centre is meeting later this year with all the major technical organisations in the world to discuss how they're going to go forward. So we can't ignore these people, right? They are thinkers, they're the leaders, they're the people that uh, get all the ideas together and look at how we're going to move forward. And I'd recommend that if any of you think, well, I don't really know what this means, and what does it mean to me in the UK? It means quite a lot, right? And we need to get thinking about what all this change is doing, because it is going so fast. 
is incredible. <coughs> I've been in the industry 40 years. <coughs> I have never seen it go so fast as it's gone in the last 10. And I have some little stories about that as well. So WA have set up this fourth industrial revolution centre because what they are trying to create is a public-private platform for collaborative development of frameworks and protocols. That's basically what we're trying to do. Setting the standards, getting standards going, and how we're going to manage our digital transformation. And digital transformation is here and going very, very fast. And we all know that because we're all being asked to do various aspects of it. And so what they are doing is getting the world ready for doing it. And have a look at their website. Um, it's quite an interesting website. Uh, and they've got lots of papers that they publish. Uh, I, I check it quite a lot. They talk about papers in healthcare, pharmaceuticals, in energy. They look at how digital change is happening in those various industries. And the people that sit on their boards, you know, they, they've got lots of the uh, high-tech people like the IBMs of this world, and their chief architects, all those types of people with the knowledge and skills about the changes that are happening. And they have lots of SMEs, new innovators, new entrepreneurs. So the people that are in there are thinking through how this world is going to move forward. But they're not the only people that are doing that. The next production revolution came out of the G7 discussions in Italy last year. Now, we've all seen the, um, I'm sure we all heard about the, the G7 meeting recently in uh, Canada. Um, but what they've been doing for a long time is building up uh, views about digital platforms. And I was asked to do a presentation a few years ago um, when David Cameron was there. And uh, we were hosting um, the G7. It was G8 then, uh, and G7 was all about data architecture, data principles. Right? You know, why, are they, why are they doing that? You know, what's that got to do with the press or something? Of course, what they were doing is trying to establish how data is going to be managed in our new world. Because uh, G7 represents more than 50% of. Uh, trade right across the world. They're very powerful in terms of how things move. And one of the key things that I remember David Cameron talking about was about taxation. Yeah. How are we going to get taxation managed across the world? Taxation is not something that is just for a country. We've got global taxation, all sorts of regulatory capabilities. So, what the G7 is doing is they are looking at digitalization. It's dominating everything that they do. All these governments are thinking about how the digital economies are changing the way in which we are operating as businesses. So they recognize that the world economy is becoming even more digital. You know, the growing use and investment in digital technologies and knowledge-based capital is profoundly changing the way we operate. Right? So um, <clears throat> they have a view about what this digital transformation will be. Now, but in uh, Davos, uh, um, sorry, not Davos, but in, um, in Canada and in uh, last year in Italy, they were focused on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the big thing that is going to trade, change our digital economy. And they think that this is so powerful that every sector and every industry and every country are going to be seriously impacted by it. And they will give us major challenges, but at the same time, major opportunity. So that's the background of the world that we have created. You know, in enterprise architecture, Terms, we've created the capabilities for people to be able to think like this. When I was doing my first uh, pro 
programming 40 years ago. I was at the accent that we never had anything like this. Nobody was thinking about it. You know, that was in the era when people were saying, oh, we only need six computers. So how many computers are there in the world today? And how many are there going to be? You know, we ran out of internet addresses. We're going to run out of internet addresses again. <coughs> the capability of this industry to completely change the way people do things is quite incredible from what I've seen in my lifetime. And do you know what? It's going even faster. And you guys are the ones that have to deal with this. Because if your CEOs are saying to you, what is our digital platform now? They never used to talk about that before. Now they're saying, what's our digital transformation? We're now setting ourselves up to become a digital company. What do we need to do? And they're looking at you, asking that question. They're looking at BCS, asking that question. What's our answer? Well, that's what I want to discuss. Because digital transformation is radically changing industry. It's radically <coughs> changing the way in which industry is run. Only to look at what's been happening in the high street. Banks are closing all their branches. High street is going down. Why? Because e-commerce is going up. Do you know what? I see more vans delivering stuff from the internet than I have ever seen. You know, just yesterday, my son ordered three packages and his, my daughter-in-law ordered another three packages. Six packages got delivered. You know, six years ago, we would have had really one package delivered. It's just taking over. The millennials are really making that internet work, right? To do what they want to do. And as a result of that, all these industries are changing. Logistics companies, completely revolutionary. Look at Amazon. Completely revolutionary. If you'd have looked at less than what were Amazon 10 years ago, they were nothing like they are now. Right? Huge, huge changes. And they've entered into all sorts of different areas. Google, if you'd have told me when Google set out, because I remember when Google set out, that they would be like they are now, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have said, well, all they're doing is cast engine. I used to work for ICL, you know, we did that capsule, right? All it, all it is is capsule engine. Look what they did with that, with that concept. So, total transformation in the digital society, and it goes on. There are governments and public utilities and small cities, okay? So when I was researching this, I've been looking at small cities quite a while. I'm very keen to get the UK going down a smart city thinking. And then I discovered Chicago has been hijacked. Somewhere else has been hijacked. One country was completely destabilized for 24 hours. People were hijacking the public capabilities that these countries had, that these cities had. They were completely ruining the way in which the lives of the people in those countries are operating. So what's the answer? Right? The answer is, don't do it. Or is the answer, we need to put capabilities in place in order to stop that happening. So here we start to look at, well, what is the enterprise architecture that they had that enabled them to do those small cities? Was it enough? Really not. Why don't they? So cyber security is now on the agenda, absolutely critical, that we do not allow our society to be hijacked um, because we want to go down this digital track. So all of this is opening up. When you look at the digital platforms, there's lots of stuff, internet things, who'd have thought it? Right? I've been involved in internet things now for over 10 years. I remember when it first came out, and I remember thinking, wow, that's going to take off. I worked for, a, a, did some work with a little company called Family Dollar in the States. Right? And I'm teaching them a TOGAF class. I'm teaching them about enterprise architecture. So guy sat there and he said, we 
we're just about to um, put smart fridges into our shops. Now, anyone know Family Dollar? You know, a thousand plus shops in the States. Huge, right? It's an outlet. Um, how are you going to manage that? Right? If something goes wrong in any shop, we want to be able to automatically sort out how we're going to operate those fridges and stuff the food is uh, being moved. So they had sat in that room and they were thinking, how can we use enterprise architecture to do that? What is it we need to build? What are components do we need to have? And that was one of my eye openers, if you like, about the power of what Internet of Things is going to provide people with the capability to do. And we've all seen it since then. So, you know, you've got blockchain, <coughs> social media, all of that's exploded. You've got artificial intelligence. What's the impact of Bitcoin? What's the impact of 3D printing, cyber security? Oh, by the way, we need to start thinking about biotechnology and how biotechnology is going to change our enterprises, because it will. It's coming. And um, we'll look at the changes that's happened in the energy and the water industry. We look at medicine and healthcare, huge uh, opportunities for the improvement of the quality of life. Learning and education, services transformation, all these industries right, are radically changing and they're using technology to improve the way in which they operate. So one other area that came up recently is uh, Theresa May, well, no, Theresa May, don't we? Right? He's our Prime Minister. Now, whatever one minute politics are, Theresa May has got her finger on that button. It's called, we can't allow the IT industry to run itself. Because we as government need to have control of how things are done. That's a very important point. So her objective, her point uh, that she made at the recent Davos meet was that when technology platforms work across geographical boundaries, we, an individual nation, can no longer manage that because no one government alone can deliver the international norms and rules, etc. associated with it. And she's absolutely right. You can't. Um, so what she was looking for is she wants to have standards for the global digital world that all countries buy into. Okay? The status quo is unsustainable as it currently is. So what is this saying? All these messages that are coming out, right? It's saying that we have to get all our act together across countries across the globe, right? What's the best way of doing that? Your architect. We need someone to architect it. Or several people, thousands of people to architect it. So the answer is, of course, this is the potential role for enterprise architecture to provide a leadership for the standards and the development of the capability to manage digitization across the world. Okay. That's where I think the future of enterprise architecture is. It's not about fixing a component down here. It's not about drawing a little model. It's about what you do with it. Right? It's not about the technicalities of agile or whatever. It's what you do with it. It's how you make the whole happen. And one of the things that I got very involved with in my early days was integration. Systems integration, of course, that in the days I used to build billing systems, right, for the water industry and the electricity industry, and that's my background, the first 10 years or so of my life. But then I went into systems integration, integrating networks of capability enabling large retail organisations to operate. But now I'm talking about retail operations across the globe. I'm talking 
talking about retail, 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 retail. I talk about e-commerce, e-commerce. I talk about energy, energy. All around the world. And we need to have the capability to do that. Ten, so, ten minutes. in the G7 statements, my recommendation to you is um, <clears throat> read this book, read this paper, right? read it. It's very important. It will give you an understanding of what's going on. It's a 15-page paper, um, and there is a quote in there. It's got 58 points and 40 principles, and the quote is this. A new window of opportunity is opening before us. The technologies offered by the next production revolution and underpinned by digital infrastructures and capabilities should hold out the promise of a better future for our citizens. Okay. So the enterprise architecture is going. We're determined to work together in advancing our common goals to promote inclusiveness, openness, and security in the digital connected era. That's what the G7 is saying. That means something. That means something to us. What are we going to do about it? What, what are we in the standards world doing? What are we in the, the professions doing? What are we going to do to help them achieve that? Those are the questions that I ask. So, the other factor I always take notice of is the work in the domain of taxation taking place in the finance ministers. And I also think about that. That means it doesn't matter where you are in the world, they're going to catch up with you on your income tax. Okay? That's what it means to you. Right? So we need to get this out right, otherwise you might find yourself paying more income tax than you might need. Okay? So we need to think about this from our own personal perspective. So get ready for enterprise architecture transformation. That's the message I have for you, okay? It's not good enough to carry on in the way we are doing now, right? We need to transform. All those industries are transforming. We need to transform. We need to rethink what we're doing. Now, I'm not going to expect, I'm not going to go through these, but I just wanted to put up 14 principles that the G7 came up with. When you read this presentation, you read those. 14 principles. E8 principles that they came out with. E8. Look at them. You know, look at them. Transparency, trust, and consumer protection. Access to the internet to high speed broadband. Recognition, recognition of ICTs. They're all the sorts of things we have in our enterprise architecture principles. 14 of them. 